There is one thing I want to mention. There's some very good physiology that can perhaps support the actual running effort part. Mm -hmm. These are very new data. And we have a study going on uh, with David Spiegel at Stanford looking at how different patterns of breathing can affect heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is good. There's this interesting mechanism I, that I think most people might not realize, but that medical students learn that your breathing and your heart rate and your brain are in this really remarkable interplay. It goes like this. When you inhale, this isn't breath work. We're not going to do breath work. But when you <laughs> inhale, the diaphragm moves down. The heart gets a little bigger because there's a little more space in the thoracic cavity. And as a consequence, blood flows a little bit more slowly through that larger volume. And there's a category of neurons, the sinoatrial node, that sees that, that recognizes that, that slower rate through that larger volume, it sends a signal to the brainstem, and the brainstem sends a signal back to the heart to speed the heart up. Mm -hmm. So every time you inhale, you're speeding the heart up. When you exhale, the diaphragm moves up, the heart gets a little smaller, the volume is smaller, blood flows more quickly through the heart, signal sent up to the brain, and the brain sends a signal back to s slow the heart down. This is the basis of heart rate variability. So at any point, if you feel like your heart is racing and you feel like you're working too hard per unit of effort, mm -hmm. focus on making your exhales longer or more intense than your inhales. If ever you feel like you're truly flagging, you do not have the energy to get up. It's like, okay, it's time to go and you're exhausted. You want to draw more oxygen into the system, get your heart rate going faster. Now, some people, when they hear this, probably think, well, this is really obvious, but there's so much out there about breath work and how to breathe and all this stuff, but no one talks about how to do it in real time mm -hmm. while you're exerting effort. So this is something like almost like second by second, you can adjust things to just in real time based on how you're feeling, but based on the heart rate. That's right. The experience of the heart rate. That's right. So one thing that will, could, could be very efficient. And we, we're doing some work with athletes now. So these are unpublished data. But if you, while you're running, if you want to get into a nice cadence of heart rate variability, do double inhales while you're running. What this will do is that when you do the double inhale, it has the effect of, of reopening the avioli of the lungs. You, your lungs are filled with tons of little sacs. When you, they tend to collapse as you fatigue. When you, and carbon dioxide builds up in the bloodstream. And that's when we start getting stressed. If you've ever been sprinting, you start getting beat and you're mm -hmm. going as hard as you can. What, what you really need to do is double inhale and reinflate these sacs in the lungs and then offload a lot of carbon dioxide. So when you're at a steady cadence and you're feeling good, double inhale, exhale, double inhale, exhale is a terrific way to breathe while you're in ongoing effort. By the way, any uh, recommendations or differences in uh, nose or mouth breathing? So nasal breathing, there's a lot of excitement now, obviously, about nasal breathing because of James Nestor's book, Breath. Um, there was also, if people are going to know about that book, they, I do feel like out of respect for my colleagues, there was a book by Sandra um, Kahn and Paul Ehrlich at Stanford, both professors at Stanford, with a foreword by um, Jared Diamond and Robert Sapolsky. So nice. some heavy hitters in this book. And the book is called Jaws, A Hidden Epidemic. And it's all about how nasal breathing is better for us, especially kids, than ma being mouth breathers under most conditions for sake of improving immunity. It turns out there's a microbiome in the nose, like all sorts of good stuff about nasal breathing preferentially. But when we exercise, you can, you can do pure nasal breathing, but the problem is once you get up to kind of third and fourth and fifth gear effort, you can't nasal breathe and be at maximum capacity unless you've been training it for a very long time. So I would say double inhale through the nose, offload through the mouth. So double inhale, exhale while you're in steady effort. And then if you really feel like you need to gas it and you're pushing, the data show that then just use whatever's there, right? Just go into kind of default mode because bringing too much concentration to something is also going to spend epinephrine. The goal is to get into that I don't like the word, but the flow state where you're not thinking too much, you're just in exertion. So these are so these are things that can help in the transitions. Um, but I don't think there's any secret breathing technique. You know, anyone who's been in the SEAL teams will kind of you know they'll tell you like there's no breathing technique, right? There's a there's tools that you can look to from time to time, and these double inhale exhales can be great for setting heart rate variability in very quickly and getting into a steady cadence while you're exercising. But if there's a sprint, like if suddenly you guys are sprinting, ditch the ditch the double inhale yeah. exhale and just sprint. Um, Jared Diamond and Robert Sapolsky, so nice. some heavy hitters in this book. And the book is called Jaws, A Hidden Epidemic. And it's all about how nasal breathing is better for 
us, especially kids, than ma being mouth breathers under most conditions for sake of improving immunity. It turns out there's a microbiome in the nose, like all sorts of good stuff about nasal breathing preferentially. But when we exercise, you can, you can do pure nasal breathing, but the problem is once you get up to kind of third and fourth and fifth gear effort, you can't nasal breathe and be at maximum capacity unless you've been training it for a very long time. So I would say double inhale through the nose, offload through the mouth. So double inhale, exhale while you're in steady effort. And then if you really feel like you need to gas it and you're pushing, the data show that then just use whatever's there, right? Just go into kind of default mode because bringing too much concentration to something is also going to spend epinephrine. The goal is to get into that, I don't like the word, but the flow state where you're not thinking too much, you're just in exertion. So these are so these are things that can help in the transitions, um, but I don't think there's any secret breathing technique. You know, anyone who's been in the SEAL teams will kind of, you know, they'll tell you like, there's no breathing technique, right? There's a there's tools that you can look to from time to time. And these double inhale exhales can be great for setting heart rate variability in very quickly and getting into a steady cadence while you're exercising. But if there's a sprint, like if suddenly you guys are sprinting, ditch the ditch the double inhale exhale yeah. and just sprint.